Okay, hi there. So today what we're doing is, um, this is a piece that was already painted. Um, and the customer that purchased it um, didn't want this finish. What she wanted was a finish that I had done on another dresser that she purchased from me a couple months ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to match this up as close as I can to what I did before. Of course, I'm not real big. Hi, Annette. <laughs> hi, I saw a comment. That's like the first time that's happened. That's awesome. Um, so thanks for coming. So, um, honest, I don't write down my formulas for ever, ever. So I just have to take a picture of what she sent me and um, in my brain go, hey, those are those colors and try to match it up. So that is what I'm doing. Now this has um, a couple coats of polyvine on it. So what I did here is I went ahead and put the first coat of sea glass on here. So I need this to dry for me, being that I did make this so sealed so well. I need my first coat to be dry. Um, don't always need that, but on this one, that's the way I'm gonna go ahead and go with this, okay? So I'm gonna finish this right here, and then we'll go back and we'll start blending over here because this will be dry. You can see it's almost dry, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, DIY paints dry super fast, so that is really nice, and I am in New Mexico. We are hot and dry um, for the most part, although it's a little humid right now, but I mean, not bad. It's like 16%, which for us is pretty humid, but it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and get this on here. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks for following me over to to YouTube. I appreciate you doing that. As always with blending, we're gonna leave the drawers in. If I need to touch up the tops or the sides when I'm finished, I will pull it out and do that. Sometimes I'm gonna add paint to those to make it more solid. Sometimes I'm just gonna get a wet rag and wipe off what, um, what got on there and just leave the edges, the tops clean. Um, is good too. These guys actually slide really well, but sometimes you get um, drawers that are really tight, and when you paint the sides and the lips of them, they tend to stick, so it's almost better just to leave those natural, and then that way um, your customer doesn't have troubles with the paint pulling and um, making the drawers stick, because nobody wants that, right? All right, so I'm just getting a pretty rough coat on here. It's not covering this yellow completely. Um, like I said, there's a couple coats of, um, of a poly on there, so it's pretty slick. That's okay. So we're just going to cover this up and um, see what we can get done here. So I'm going to try to keep this as quick as I can. Don't... Um, want anybody losing interest so the thing that I've learned with YouTube that if YouTube's YouTube's different than um, than Facebook or anything so a big part of what they go off of is how long people watch the video um, Facebook just goes off how many people watch it so it even if you watch for 30 seconds on Facebook it counts as a watch so what YouTube does is it actually judges how long you can keep people's interest so if people are signing off your channel or your your videos like right away not watching them then YouTube is keeping track of that because they're keeping track of minutes watched so it's a little bit different um, so if you ever want to destroy someone's channel that's what you do just kidding go on and then you can just don't watch you get back off no don't do that that'd be horrible but seriously that's the way YouTube works it's a little different than, than Facebook so all right so we have a coat pretty much everywhere of sea glass and over here we're pretty much dry so we're going to move on down the road and I'm going to leave my sea glass behind and I am going to grab my mermaid tail and my coral and my water bottle of course we're going to use water so let's go ahead and move on down the road I guess I'm just going to sit down here and you all see okay and we're good so down here, let's see how we should do this, because I don't remember what I did a long time ago, so we're just going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and dip into my mermaid tail, which is just a darker um, green. I'm going to give this guy a little squirt, and we're just going to start blending and getting this on here. So anywhere I feel like the paint is dragging, I'm going to give it a little bit of mist with the misting bottle which will help me to blend my paint and um, 
have it move better for me. So these mid-century modern pieces are, are definitely different um, when it comes to blending. These ones actually have the rounded drawers on top, which gives you something a little bit to play with, but a lot of them are just straight like this, which makes you have to use your imagination a little bit more to get the look that you want. If you're blending, if you're painting solid, whatever, you know, that's easy peasy. Okay, so I covered this up. Got some mermaid tail on there now. Let me get this part a little better with the mermaid. So the difference between this piece is definitely going to be, and the one that I did for her previously, is that I had um, distressed the other one and wood came out. Well, that's not gonna happen with this one because this one is um, very well sealed. <laughs> so we're gonna have a little bit of yellow coming out, which is gonna be just fine. And now we're going to go ahead and dip in. I'm still going to use the same brush. And I'm going to go ahead and dip in just a little dabble do, a little tiny bit. And um, we're going to put that here in the middle. We're going to kind of highlight this section with some coral. And with the lighter color being just in the center of these drawers that are sticking out a little bit, it'll kind of make it accentuate the roundness and the curve of of those jars. We add just a little, and again, we're just trying to match this up pretty much as close as we can to what the piece looked like, what the customer wants. So we're not going to be doing any dripping or any um, crazy things because we just want it to match in her bedroom. I'm just going to kind of keep adding it here and there to give me little bit of interest and a little bit of love. So not super dramatic, but good. So I am happy with that. Can you guys see? I'm going to pull you over here more. See if I can. Oh, don't fall. How's that? Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to head on down here now. And when I get down here, I am gonna overlap a little bit so that that'll blend in there nicely for me. So another mist and some mermaid tail. So we'll go ahead and get an end to the mermaid. Ditching the shoes, sorry. Okay. Go ahead and go down the sides because as I go around that corner over there, I'm going to want things to match up for me. So again, a little misting. And you can see how easy the paint goes on, just like butter. And then we're using the nice, the Klingon S50. These brushes are super smooth with their synthetic um, fibers in them, so I don't drop bristles and I don't have brush marks. It's just really, really easy to use. So if you ever want to get good brush, you can get your hand on the Klingon. This S50 is my absolute favorite. I have two of them and I just rotate them out constantly. So another cool thing about the Klingons, which I don't I think a lot of people don't know this. Um, so anybody who has bought one and didn't know this, here's a little tip. So what you do with these brushes, which makes them a little bit different than your average brush too, is when you're done painting, when it's time to clean your brush, what you do is you take your brush and you rinse out all the water, or rinse out all the paint, so get it pretty much completely out, and then you have a container, and you have about yay much water in the bottom of this container, okay? And then you don't use any soap or anything like that. You take your brush and you stand it up in the container of water. What happens is these bristles suck up all the paint from up here and it just falls out. So you keep your brush wet until it's time to use it again. And that is going to um, preserve the life of your brush. Not only does it, I mean, it just helps these brushes so, so, so much, but it's really just a very awesome way to do it. You don't have to get out your, your soaps or anything like that. It just, it just pulls right back out of the little fibers in here. And it's super easy. So even though I sell Klingon, 
I um, I hadn't looked that up. And so I was actually washing my brushes until my friend told me and I was like, oh. So I went and looked it up and sure enough, she was right. You don't have to do that with these. So I don't know about you, but I don't like washing brushes. Not one of my favorite things to do. So just being able to rinse it and put it in a little container of water. What I actually use is, um, you know how you get those dishwashing detergent um, containers? It's like the square box with the plastic lid. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Um, if you get those, so yeah, the square box, like for your, um, for your dishwasher, it has little tabs in it, and it's a little plastic square box. What I did was I just cut a hole in that lid and put a little bit of water, and then I can stand my brushes up. They don't fall over, and um, they just stay. Honestly, they just stay on top of the kitchen sink because I use them so much that I don't even take them back to the garage anymore because it just seems silly. I used to, but not anymore. And um, now that I'm keeping them wet because I can just rinse it, stick it right back in there, and I am ready to go because they don't have to be dry. When you use it, you just kind of wring it out a little bit, and there you go. Okay. So I've got some coral blended in there. Honestly, I'm not digging that so much. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna just gonna make this much more coral all the way around. It just looks too boxy to me. I'm not digging it too much. And what if we went this way? Let's see if we can just blend all this up and down and around. And just keep dragging really lightly. You don't want brush strokes. I also don't want a box. You see a lot of pieces that are done that looks very boxy like. You can see where they were shading in the middle, um, but it, it's not smooth, like it doesn't feel like you can see the box that they're going for, and so I, I don't wanna go for that. I want it to be more smooth. So I'm gonna scoot on over here, because as you can see, this is dry over here now. And I might have to ask my dog to move. Go on, thank you. And let's go ahead and start up here. Turn this a little bit so I don't sit on it because <laughs> I'm up close and personal now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get some mermaid in here. Try to get all that covered up. Again, like I said, when I'm done, I will pull these out and um, get the edges where I didn't get. Or I'll wipe them off, whichever one it seems more appropriate and for the thing. I'll go around this corner over here a little bit so that when I do get to the sides, my paint is matched and not completely different colors. Spray in a little bit as they go, which makes our paint get on there much smoother and blend in nicely. Get down here. But since I went over a little bit, I can reactivate my paint on this other drawer and drag that back across to make it cohesive and not look like I overlapped like I did. So let's get some here on this little base guy. on there pretty good. Right, thanks for joining me guys. I appreciate it. And if you would, my, my YouTube channel is so, so new. If you wouldn't mind sharing it, that would be awesome. Um, so that I can get more people to subscribe so that I can keep growing. I would really appreciate that. If you don't want to, that's cool too, but Always nice to share the love. And I'm working on getting a couple edited videos up. I haven't done one of those in a while, but I will. So I'm gonna go ahead and move down some more. A little bit of misting. And let's spray this on here. Not spray it, paint it. Get it on. So you can see our stencil is going to pop through just a little bit. I think that's actually going to be kind of cool. I 
could go heavier on it to completely cover it up, but I'm not going to because I think I might really like that. It will be like a little hidden treasure under there. All right, I'm going to dip into the coral, spray it here, and then spread that coral around. And let's go back into the mermaid tail and go down here. So we're just moving quick, we're keeping everything wet so that we can just keep mixing it up and blending it until we like what we're doing and we're happy with what our end result is. I find that a lot of painting is trial and error. A lot of times when I'm doing work, I like hate it, I hate it so bad and then I just keep messing with it and usually those ones that you hate, that you feel like you really are just not doing a good job come out to be some of the coolest ones. It's really interesting how that works. But I have found that out a lot. Sometimes the plan in your brain is not exactly what comes out on your brush. I think that's the biggest thing that I hear and I want to just anybody who's starting to paint or thinking about wanting to, you know, don't take it so seriously. It's really just paint, you know, and and don't let, I mean, if you want to be really serious about it, that's fine if that's your personality, but don't let it stop you from doing what you want to do because you, you can paint over it. It's okay. And, um, you know, like I said, I mean, those of us who paint like all the time, very rarely, I think, does exactly what we want to happen and our brains actually come out on that paintbrush. So trial and error, it's learning, all of that fun stuff. So again, we're looking a little boxy, so we're going to go this way. Don't want any boxes. Just wet it to reactivate it. Go up a little more. And now we'll go back, which should eliminate our boxiness. back and forth, really light hand. Now it's just kind of a blur. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more mermaid tail. I'm gonna hit it right here in the middle. And I'm gonna define my blue that separates my drawers a little bit more. Just gonna kind of do it like that. And like that. All right, we got a little more interest there, a little more different shading. You can see this one's starting to dry over here. We'll see how these ones are gonna dry. So, keeping it short, guys, that is all. That's almost 20 minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you wanna see more, and share it, please. Oh, just kidding, I'm not begging. If you want to, bye y'all.